Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Electric Underground Podcast slash videocast. Joining me today is Redline. How's it going, Hello. my dude? It's going good, man. How are we doing? Doing well. And I'm really excited to bring you on the show because it's been a little bit, but a few months ago, maybe it was, you posted this Tekken video, the summary of Tekken 7 over all yeah. the years. And I really liked a lot of the points you made in that video and pretty much agreed with everything you said. And so I thought it'd be really cool because it's been a while since I've talked about the fighting game scene and fighting games on the channel. But in the old days of the Electric Underground, it was actually a much more common topic. So I thought it'd be cool to sort of revisit the topic and bring you along. So how's it going, my dude? Yeah, it's going good, man. I, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm really happy with that video. I, not so much the delivery. I kind of wish I was a bit more uh, natural with it. Uh, I'm not used to reading lines and stuff, but I'm really yeah. happy with everybody... I was expecting to get completely, you know, blown up by the community and just, you know how some people can be on the internet. You share a negative opinion about something they like. Oh, and, yeah. And, <clears> yeah, I you're dead to rights. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I was expecting that. I, I was going to be like, this is, this is like, I'm going to post this. If it, if people blow me up, I'm just not going to post anything again. This is it. I'm done. I'm oh, going to retire. <laughs> yeah, legitimately, this is it. Game over. <laughs> but no, people, people like... I've not had anybody really disagree with anything I put forward, which is rare. <laughs> rare, if anything. Yeah, yeah and I think really enough cool time it. has gone by with Tekken 7 where now that Tekken 8 is sort of on the horizon, it's funny people's mm. minds start to shift and they start to be more open to criticism of Tekken yes. 7. That yeah. was like, very much the case with Street Fighter 4, where if you really, criticize Street Fighter 4 during its heyday, you know, you were in for a rough time. But yeah, yeah. when Street Fighter V was announced, everyone's like, yeah, you know, it is kind of stupid how Elena can heal. <laughs> and, you know, everyone They've would got, start um, to rethink. It kind of goes that way it. around, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Like, it, it cycles. Because I know if, if, if it happened to the Tekken community, everybody, barely anybody played Tag 2. Uh, mm -hmm. So much that it was com a complete commercial, like, disaster, apparently. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and now Tekken 7's coming to the end. Everybody's like looking back. Oh, Tekken Tag 2 was really, really good, actually. And it's like, I thought everybody <laughs> hated this game. Like, and I remember <laughs> very distinctly at the time, everyone was very hard on Tekken Tag 2 because of mm, its systems, mm. because of its massive combos. You think Tekken 7 combos are long? Wait till you do some Tekken Tag 2 combos going yeah, with the tag crashing and everything. Yeah. I, I, I can see, I, it would drive me insane, but because it's a tag game, I probably would be like, I, yeah, whatever. I'll just. I expect this. <laughs> That's fine. But like yeah. seven's rough. <laughs> and I never played tag two competitively. I was I was a little bit more familiar with tag one, where you can oh, yeah. launch them in the air and tag out and stuff like that. But those were old quite, school um, tech and juggle combos where you didn't have. <clears throat> Yeah, bounds and screws or whatever they get a couple called. of little jabs here and there, and that's about it. Yeah, j yes. jab, jab, ender. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, lame as kind of as those combos can look, like over hundreds of hours of gameplay. That 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 lameness is is like uh, I don't know appreciated because it's so short. It's like all right, I'm launched. All right, I'm back in the game. Yes, yes. <laughs> as I said in that video, tech and you get launched. Just go to the bathroom, man. Like you come back. Yeah, you might you know yeah. And if might you're be in that for the end. If you're in that floor break stage in uh, Tekken 7, oh, yeah, yeah, say yeah. say goodnight because you're going to yeah. get floor broke and then to the wall and then, yeah, that, that I'm stage gonna is I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on. I've been meaning to say this. I've got a tinfoil hat moment, but I'm convinced anytime I go up against Armor King or King, that stage is the one that comes up online. Yes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it knows. I've yet to fight. <laughs> I, I'm sure there's like a, a thing like, oh, if he's playing King, don't give him open stages. Always give him a floor break. There's something weird going on. I that don't know. is true that you bring that up because I maybe it's a little bit of whatever you call it, like selection bias or whatever. But mm -hmm. yes, I remember a lot of floor break stages against the kings and the armor kings. Always the grapplers. It's always the grapplers. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, Negan's. But, yeah, I, he's not. Negan, I don't know if he's a grappler, but I remember every time I fight Negan yeah, on that he is. stupid he, floor break he's... stage. <laughs> I like to call him like Grappler Paul. Like if he, it, like Paul can just delete your health bar on one mistake, and yeah. Bardock can do that too, one hundred percent. Just completely delete your health bar. <laughs> but outside mm. of Tekken, I also wanted to bring you on because over, in my opinion, at least over the past five or six years, I think there's been, uh, maybe I'm being an old man here, and people in the comments can definitely weigh in. It, maybe I have a bit of old man syndrome here, but I do feel like there has been a real shift in sort of how the FGC is these days both in terms of how it's run how events work 
but also just sort of the vibe of the player base, the vibe of the content you get. And I think it's been a bit of a falling in quality, in my opinion, to put it, I guess, to put it delicately. <laughs> so mm, yeah. I've been wanting to sort of get your perspective as well, because you're a bit of a fresher face to the FGC than I am. And yeah, so, quite fresh, to be fair. Yeah. 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 So maybe my old man thoughts may or may not be as accurate. Uh, but I guess to start off with, the biggest thing that I've noticed in the past four or five years is there's been a real shift away from, I guess you would say, like, content that is centered around the games and the game mechanic and much more of a shift towards content that is centered around the players, the drama, the drama of the drama, all that sort yeah. of stuff. Uh, 100%. What do yeah. you think about that, Redline? Yeah, there's, there's definitely been, um, a, like I say, a, a, a big tonal shift, at least, in terms yes. of the content that's made. Um, either it's throwaway people make you know just oh new fighting games come out i'll make a throwaway bit of content uh -huh. for it and move on yes. so mm -hmm. fighting games are constantly churned through uh, and they live on dying the content that's made according to people let alone we know old games still have player bases there's constant um kuso game you know dead like poverty game uh -huh. uh, like tournaments that... always yes yeah exactly like sailor moon that's like a one mm. people like now <laughs> that old sailor moon yeah, it's, arcade it's game. still active exactly yeah. it's still active but you know you talk to somebody it's like oh well panda global isn't making a video on it so it must be dead or there's no or streamers Max for it dude. right now exactly or maximilian uh there's just no 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 viewers so on these videos so it's dead you know what i mean um yeah so a lot of games end up getting like thrown away rather quickly in this kind of like content cycle uh or yes get, and it's uh, so and i look really glad you brought this up because it is like mm. such a distinguishable cycle it's not just oh you're being paranoid because it can it's like literally melty blood was like this i remember very distinctly oh. melty blood melty came blood out and it was like melty blood week on the fgc internet everyone was talking about it everyone was making videos about it people were having drama yeah. fights about it it was, it was like, like almost like a golden age of fighting games had come back with the way people were talking yeah, about it yes yeah. exactly <laughs> it was like hyped to here to the moon and so i got kind of sucked mm -hmm. into it myself and i ended up buying the game because like oh this is going to be because it was a cool looking game but i'm saying yeah. i thought it was going to be like a real movement in the FGC yeah. where all these people were going to Maximilian and all these people are, is going to be like the talk of the town. People at my local were getting melty blood. I was like, all right, I'll get it. I'll play it. Uh, I got it. I practiced it for a week. A week later, yep. there's a new game yep. and melty blood. What, gone. What's melty blood? <laughs> yeah, nobody's played melty blood anymore. It's completely dead. Exactly. I, have a, I actually did a, uh, a little finger quotes bit of research. I just went onto a website and checked Steam stats. <laughs> I love this. I Steam put stats. together <laughs> exactly i put together an info infograph of like this was uh november time i think i'll try and find the the image but uh basically like comparing active player bases for steam not just as of 24 hours but like over the month and things yes, like yes. that and melty blood was out of all the fighting games melty blood was like number 30 it was below street fighter 4 uh <laughs> because that content cycle Holy has just killed hell. it you know i mean yeah. people have moved on yeah yeah it, it was really shocking to be fair I think even one of the Dead or Alive's is higher than it. I think I'm gonna try yeah. to find it. Uh, Dead or Alive, yeah, you could... probably Dead or Alive Six. Dead or Alive Six yeah. still has DOA fans. Myself being a DOA fan, yeah, there's nothing that quite scratches the DOA itch. So even if mm. everyone else moves on, if you're a DOA fan, you still end up playing a good amount of DOA. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's always yep. been a game. Speaking of games that are sort of dead games or whatever, DOA's has always been sort of the lower tier in terms of player base size. So yeah, yeah, it's a little it's a little less susceptible to this sort of thing than other fighting games like Melty Blood or whatever, where that might also be a 3D fighting game thing as yes, well. Yes, it's not many 3D, 3D fighting games thing. to yeah. deal with. Yeah, very yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah, I think that as well. 3D fighting games tend to sort of hold their ground a little bit better sometimes. Mm. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> other games just don't offer what those games have. Whereas I think like in, there's 2D fighting games. Of, uh huh. Of, uh, again, they're very different, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, Guilty Gear doesn't feel anything like Street Fighter. You know, Metal Gear Blood doesn't feel like Guilty Gear, but someone who's fresh to the scene, so to speak, and not really into the 2D side of things. I'm, I'm learning. I'm getting there. But, like, I can, like, look at some of those games and just go, like, well, they just kind of look the same. Whereas you go to, like, a 3D fighting game, VF plays nothing like Tekken. And people right. that yes, exactly. try and play VF 
Yeah, like it. I, like, when, where's just, the Korean backdash? What do I even yeah, do? <laughs> it doesn't play anything like. Yeah. It doesn't play anything like Tekken. So it's like offers something completely different. I feel like DOA is like a fusion between the two. They it are. Feels like it is like a, yeah. It is exactly like if you have a graph. On one end you have mm. Tekken. On one end you have VF. And in the middle is DOA. That's very true because yeah. it actually has mechanics from both of them, and it yeah. kind of smashes yeah. them together in a fun way. With its like catch system that changes things up even more, so it's not just a fusion, but it's got its own stuff on top of that. So it's like each game really does offer like yeah. a niche. Even that the side no step, other fighting game really does. Even the sidestep is like a halfway point between Tekken and mm. Virtual Fighter. Well, Virtual Fighter has like distinctive d side steps, right? There's like you're yeah, not yeah, side walking yeah. in Virtual Fighter, and then Tekken, it's all about that sidewalk. Sidewalk is huge, yeah. and then yeah, yeah. Uh, DOA has both a distinctive sidestep and a sidewalk yeah. and they're it's kind of like exactly it's like a middle ground between the two of them and and it's smooth almost like soul caliber yes uh, yeah which, again which is again it's his own 3d fighting game completely different mm -hmm. from the other ones you really like i'm into 3d fighters but it's not like i'm into i can't be into tekken and just say oh well you like tekken you'll like vf because they yes. are very different you know yeah, exactly. uh, whereas like i feel like with 2D fighting games, uh, yeah, you, you can kind of like anime like fighters, Gears. especially. I mean, yeah, anime fighters. I, I go again. I, the I'm proof gonna get is in the pudding because you'll yeah. well, the proof is in the pudding though because you'll go to F locals and they'll swap mm. the games like they're interchangeable. You go in, we're playing Melty Blood. Then you go in, yeah. oh, we're playing uh, Blaze Blue, or you'll yeah. go in, okay, yeah. now we're playing Guilty Gear. You know, <laughs> this is happening. I don't even know what I don't even know what normals do, man. Can yeah, we slow down? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, yeah, one hundred percent agree. Like you say, the the the, the games are just kind of like probably because of this this cycle, or because mm -hmm. there's too many games to play. A few different factors, probably, but games are like dying really quick, <laughs> being made, uh, being played, and then dying within about three weeks of each other. So, and you yeah, know what really I've I've been thinking about is you know you think about it from the terms of a player. And I've been very frustrated mm. this as a player because I literally will go to my locals and they're changing the games every time I yeah. go. Yeah. That's gotten yeah. a little frustrating. But also as a content maker, YouTuber, video maker, podcaster, whoever you would be, this could also be extremely frustrating too because like, you couldn't really dig into a game and make a whole series of videos about it because by the time you get video two out, yep. the game yep. is dead. So that's yep. why got, I think I've we're getting these going really the exact shallow same videos on this stuff. Yep. 100%. I've got a friend going through the exact same thing. Like, I spent, so yeah, VF5 uh, Akira combo list, like a simple one. Yeah. Dance agnostic, um, simple combos. So there's like no. You go to the VF.com, there's a lot of combos you can learn for, for Akira, and some of them are like ridiculous. The, the <laughs> yes. difficulty jump between yeah. combo A and combo B is massive, and there's like one point extra damage, and it only works on three characters. Right, so it's like, I know. All right. Yeah. So I've cut it down to like make it as simple as possible. And I spent ages on that. Some of the combos uh, aren't in VF.com. Some of the combos are new. Uh, that I found some new tech that doesn't seem to be listed down anywhere. I'm sure some Japanese players knew it. Yes. I found yeah. all this information. They keep it, it on ages. A, yeah, like a, yeah. in a notebook. Keep it on the download. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, I was even going through uh, Japanese um, like VF forums and YouTube videos and trying to like just pull what I can uh, from them. And... Uh, I was finding everything I could and like I couldn't see this anywhere and I spent months well, probably about two months Writing and putting together and recording and editing this video uh, And the, the game's dead. It's already gone. I've got a friend who was porting over the Virtual Fighter 4 tutorial information Into VF5 as in like, okay, so this is what this tutorial is teaching you This is how you practice it in VF5 and he was doing this for the entire VF4 tutorial. Holy uh, hell. VF5. Yeah, oh, unreal. The guy's like amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But, game's dead so like it's almost like why why keep going because like, nobody's watching it he's getting like 10 views but the, the content is amazing yeah i feel um, really bad for people who make these types of videos because mm. there was a time where they really really got you some viewership and people watched them and stuff and i've watched yeah. like the, one channel for example that i watched in the heyday of street fighter 4 was vesper arcade and he was really good at making all these guides for Street Fighter 4. You know, he's explaining plinking, he's explaining pianoing, yeah. he's giving you character breakdowns. He's making this whole tutorial series. And he was one of the channels I watched to mm -hmm. figure out how do I play this game and stuff. And he his channel had a real time there where it was really popping off. Lots of people tuning in. And then Street Fighter 5 comes out 
He's doing yeah. the same stuff for Street Fighter V, but the interest is just dropping off massively. And yeah. so I watch in real time as his videos steadily lose more and more viewers. And it's and I've seen that with another fighting game channel for DOA too. It's just crazy how that yeah, style it, of content is so hard to use these days. I think one of the few few channels I even know for DOA is uh, DOA is um Emery Reigns. I think he's the only guy I know, right. and even he's like, I, like he's thinking of just playing DOA Five because the few fans that are actually looking for content for that online, they they're only bothered in DOA Five rather than Six. Yeah, so it's like, the only yeah. the only two that I keep up with or know is Emery Reigns and Force mm. of Nature, and he. I've not heard of them. Yeah, he does character tutorials. So if you want to know how to do matchups and stuff in DOA, yeah. he's the guy to go to. But the the sad thing is him him too. He was doing this DOA five times. It was really popping off. DOA six. I'm yeah. like the only person watching his character tutorials in DOA six. It, like, and it's just the really good, passionate content. But uh, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it's like it's not really viable to keep work to keep making because. Like what you spend how many hours putting these videos together, and if nobody's watching it, so yeah. then you go to this and the content biggest, cycle. Uh, and the biggest oh. thing about DOA Where six that people ever talked about was the whole uh, core values thing. Like that was <laughs> DOA's <laughs> shining moment in sure. terms of it's when it got canceled from Evo core values. I thought I, I don't know why. Like they got, they got canceled from Evo, but then like what was it, Mister Wiz, with the yeah, things he did? I'm like, come on, man. But isn't <laughs> like, that sort of I always find that as sort of a bit of a sign, a kind, or at least a point of suspicion. It can be when people mm, are mm. overly, like they're overly aggressive with things like that. It's like, hmm, yeah, yeah. You I know, can why see are you that. being usually... so aggressive about this? Because all that happened with DOA six was they had some booth girls and they were being a uh, being a bit silly. You know, it wasn't like yeah. this huge, huge issue. I don't think you need no. to drop it from the uh, tournament. <laughs> Yeah, it seemed a bit much, you know. Like yeah, I, I exactly. don't know. It, it does. It does. There's definitely a pattern uh, there that, like, yeah, when people are overly defensive, it's usually because they're trying to, you know, they're trying to keep back. smoke <laughs> yeah. off their back, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah. And after all, that, all that came out, it's like, well, there you go. You know, yeah, it's hard exactly. to kind of like hard to argue. Yeah, and they, like, they, you look at how these channels, you know, live and die when they're making content that's, you know, well thought out, passionate. Mm -hmm. But then, like, they don't get the views because the cat channels that do get the views, uh, going back to what we were saying before, the channels that do get the views are, oh, I'll do a quick combo video for this, and then we'll move on to the next game, keep or just, the content I think, wheel spinning. I think even or drama. more than that is just, yeah, drama channels. And then also, you're, you're basically just sort of a trailer reaction channel. Yeah. <laughs> like Maximilian yeah, Dude, yeah. for example, if you watch sort of the evolution of his style of content, there, you know, and I still like his channel, but I mean, it's it's yeah. very clear the shift. It's undeniable. The Seems shift. Seems like a cool guy, but yeah, it's like it's a shame that the the, the the videos that get the views is like, well, you're financially and you know incentivized to to exactly. make that content, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And he's talked about this. Like, it's not like he's not an open about it, but and it's hard as a YouTuber, it's hard for me to really fault him, but at the same time. It's like because this as content, a viewer, it sucks. As a viewer, yeah. it's brutal. It's absolutely mm. brutal because he used yep. to do all these sort of like assist me videos and like really yeah, make I used to this look like the, really juicy um, content. And the guy's still going hard in the paint, so I don't want to be too hard on him. Yeah. and he's basically the one of the few channels still standing. But yeah. I think yeah. he's yeah. fallen into this content cycle that's pretty brutal because every like he's just following along with the announcements and news and it's like every day there's a new announcement there's more news yeah so yeah yep. it becomes uh, overwhelming even as a viewer well yeah i mean i look at like fighting games i've got so many fighting games it's, it's almost like shmups to be fair yeah <laughs> because because i've come late to the party i suppose on that front but um like i look at my my you know my library on steam or my main folder and things like that it's like i've got all these games to yeah, learn exactly <laughs> and fighting games if you want to get good at a fighting game like good like no not just like oh, i press buttons and uh, you know get by if you want to start learning in fact you really have to like or at least i really have to sink some time it takes me a, t a long time to learn yeah, these games too. so i was just saying when a game just drops it's like oh everybody's moving over to play this and it's dead by the time you get to it yeah <laughs> it's like that's uh, been uh, my experience a down. lot as of late where mm. you finally kind of figure out a character you figure out your supers you figure out your bread and butter combos you go yeah. to play it and then a week later you know there's a whole new game everyone's talking about mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the the kind of the weird part about it is i wonder at one point 
when FTC players are just going to dig their heels in and just be like, no, <laughs> no yeah, more. Yeah. But they're I, really I not. And if you follow yeah. like even conversations on discords and stuff, it'll mm. be, you know, one week we're talking about Strive. Next week we're talking about Samurai Showdown. It's King of Fighters now. Like everyone was King all about Fighters Samurai Showdown. Showdown. Yeah. And then King of Fighters come out. They're like, oh, screw Samurai Showdown. King of Fighters yeah. time. <laughs> Cause I, I really want Samurai Showdown to be all right, but the the, the net code is just so poor, it's unplayable, basically. Yeah, so that yeah. kind of makes or breaks a game at this point as well. As much as the content cycle tends to focus on two or three... So of, of games just cycling through. Yeah. There's always like two or three, maybe well, four, maybe four or five games, series, that will just last. So we've got like Tekken, Street Fighter, I've seen Guilty Gear, Mortal Kombat, we'll always have players. I would Dragon say, Ball Fighter Z seems to be sticking. Yeah. I would actually argue that of those, the one that stuck the hardest was definitely Tekken. And I do know that Street Fighter V had a pretty solid, you know, following or whatever. But I mm. saw a lot of Street Fighter Center channels really take a beating uh, in terms yeah. of viewership and stuff. Whereas the, oh, yeah. we're during the Tekken 7 era, we saw a lot of new channels pop up and a lot of yep. new growth. Yeah, mine. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> mine was so based off of, off if of Tekken I was, as well. So if I was going to be an FGC YouTuber type person, I would say mm. Tekken is probably your safest bet in terms of yeah. centering um, your channel around it. It's weird. Like uh, Tekken really kind of popped up specifically, I think, because of a lot of the content that was made around it. Street of Fighter, exactly, like you, you, look, yes. you can find loads of different content based on Tekken, it's like modding content, and not that Street Fighter can't be modded, not that you can't do this with Street Fighter, and there are a couple of channels, and uh, maybe like one or two that do like like memes, like, so I did like, like Tekken memes, like a, a, <laughs> where I would just yeah. play and just add stupid stuff over the top of it, and you know, trolling stuff, and what have you, you know, deaf stuff, right? Yes. There's so many channels like with Tekken like that do that, that do the modding, that do tutorials, uh, that that just show their uh, vods. And Street Fighter has like some of those, but it's not it's not nearly as popular. And I, maybe because I wonder if a lot of the player base is just on console as opposed to PC. And I wonder if that's like causing something. issues with it. I think it's something like that, or the player base is a little bit less engaged than the Tekken player base. Mm. Even thinking back, for example, during the Street Fighter Four days. There was a lot going on in terms of content and top yeah. players. Like, oh, just thinking back now, you had all these moments like Poonko taking off his shirt, and that was like a big thing, <laughs> like that. Kazunoko, like him just destroying mm -hmm. people and him kicking everyone's ass, and like I mean, you got Cross Counter, which was yeah. like the. To be fair, Street Fighter Four started content for, for fighting so games. So many really. people, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, for um, so many channels. They started the, con the, the the concept of content for fighting game, like, content, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. and then there was Snake Eyes during Street Fighter 4, his sort of rise to fame, and even mm. had, like, a documentary about him and stuff during Street Fighter I have Street to look Fighter that 4. up. I've not seen that. Yeah, no, it was pretty cool. And Street Fighter 5, the only thing you hear about it is, you know, drama with Street Fighter 5. Yeah, basically. Like, the game's yeah. got root yeah. kits or, you know, all kinds Fuck of issues. Know. I can't like the, believe that was a thing. What yeah. was that? Was that for the anti-cheat or something? What was that about? I can't remember, but I remember people who didn't even know Street Fighter messaging me about it. So I remember Crazy. that was pretty infamous. And then, of course, the moment where, like, what was that? That rapper, uh, Daigo, like, threw to that rapper and stuff. Oh, Lupe no, Fiasco. No. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, there's an exhibition match between Daigo and Lupe Fiasco. And, and he threw the match. And he threw the match. <laughs> it's like, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's it's very much. Um, it feels like more mainstream, um, more more uh, curated, I suppose. Like you've only got like a few creators that are making content. Brian F. Daigo gets some streams translated for people, but yeah, I don't know. It just feels a bit in on the ground in terms of content and, yeah. and variation in content. Like it, people are all just making the same stuff for Street Fighter Five. It felt feels like. Yes, um, and there's now. And like I've looked, I've tried to find stuff. I couldn't find any. Like I found like one meme channel, like that was it. Uh, I forget. <laughs> yeah, his name and Pikachu now. Akuma isn't around. He was one of my favorite Street oh, yeah. Fighter uh, content makers. So Pikachu Akuma, he's a guy that you know. This is a more obscure channel, but mm -hmm. what he what he's a third strike player, and he was really freaking good. And oh, yeah, yeah. his channel was hit was just match footage, but. 
it was him perfecting, like triple perfecting people. And he had like hour long compilations of him nice. perfecting That's people crazy. in in a third strike. And he'd do it. Yeah. He did a little bit of it in Street Fighter Four. But I checked mm. his I checked his channel, you know, he's not as active. There's just a lot of people like that who have just been fell off a bit. Who, yeah. who just kind of stopped in the past four yeah. or five years. Maybe people not liking five as well. A lot of people seem to really still like five apparently has turned itself around, but I think I think it's just struggled to recover from its release, yes, maybe. Absolutely. You know? Um but yeah, you they say it's it, in which case then these channels tend to uh, go towards drama. Whether it's manufactured or not, it, it does feel like there's like a lot of well, and reaction videos, yeah. and my favorite are, Yeah, I saw, <laughs> not to be too funny, but I like the main <laughs> man, but he had a video, he made a tier list or something, and then Arslan Ash reacted to his video, and then <laughs> yeah. and then the main man reacted to Arslan Ash reacting to his video, so he had like a three layer <laughs> <laughs> reaction video going. They're like, I've not really watched main man stuff in a while, because he's kind of like fallen off of Tekken, which, I mean, because every time he did anything, he'd just get these people just kicking off at him, like, a divisive guy. Like, people uh, either disagree, Think thing is with Tekken, when you make content based around, like, balance patches, or, like, complaining yes, about- anything like that. Anything- People, yeah, people throw tantrums. Like, there's a there's a channel out, I'm going to shout out later who did a Tekken video, um, basically just saying like, try Tekken out. He's not a Tekken player, but he's been trying it out, and he says like he's worried about what Tekken players thought of it because he didn't want to like say, oh, this character needed nerfing here, or I've got this problem with this balance problem because yeah. you mentioned in a game like Tekken, somebody's going to have 500 examples of why that's a why it should be like that, and you know, it's, yeah, it's a big game and lots of people complain. So like. Main man, most of his content is based around balancing and, and tutorials and guides and things like that. And people think, like, I don't know, because really... he's not top 10 in the world or something like that, his opinion is illegitimate. Like, he's right, not a exactly. good player. That's like, exactly he wouldn't right. free up half the people arguing <laughs> with him. Like, yes, like I don't exactly. know. Yeah. Uh, so he just kind of got a bit bored with the drama, I think. And, and Tekken in general, by the sounds of it, because probably for the same reasons I mentioned in, in my video. Yes. Um, He's probably so, my favorite current yeah, he's, YouTube. He got me into Tekken watching for, his videos for fighting games. We're speaking of content here. One of my biggest problems, there's been this shift in the content he puts out where in the past he was very dedicated to his YouTube channel. He made all these great yeah. videos, he made all these great tutorials. He did a really good job, especially if you're a Mishima player, explaining yeah. how to play Mishimas and everything. But lots of effort. But as of late, what you'll get on his channel a lot is sort of stream highlights instead of him yeah. making a dedicated YouTube video. Instead, it's a clip from his stream. And that's not just yeah. main man. This is sort of like the new style of FGC content. Uh, yeah, me yeah. Melee players do it. Street Fighter players do it. Tekken players do it where you're just getting like slices of their streams. twitch streams mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, it's yeah. probably because they make way more money twitch streaming than they do youtubing and i do understand that but it's a lot easier it, as well yeah. yeah and way easier yeah. i wish i could do that yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, well, what i found it's not even just fighting game content that's youtubers as well like uh, yes, there's a guy called pay money pay money Wubby is is one specifically who had a main channel uh, who would upload 30 minute videos you know, just based on, I don't know, just random stuff uh, online. Uh, not so much drama, but, you know. Like vlogging, kind of stuff like that? Yeah, well, no, more, more like he'd just find some kind of crazy thing online and he'd just talk about that. Uh, but it would be oh, researched, okay. edited, and things like that. It was quite Kind well of done. like uh, uh, JD Sex Kick. Do you remember that channel? Uh, I've not heard of him, no, okay, that's no, a, no. That's a, out, if you're a shmup fan, that's a great channel to check out because he had he made a video about Toho that's still my favorite oh, yeah? video about Toho ever. It's, <laughs> we it's should really, like link all these in the in the yes. description, like get people yeah, like a, a library really of videos funny. to watch. <laughs> but I actually really liked yeah. his channel outside of that because he would just sort of do these videos where he'd talk about okay, now he's talking about Toho. Then he yeah. made a video talking about like his childhood playing Pokemon and talks yeah, about yeah. how his dad so, like, left. No dad. one specific subject. Yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. His dad yeah, left yeah, yeah, when yeah. he was eight and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, and those types of YouTube channels just don't exist anymore. They're so rare. No. Yeah. So this guy started out like that, got a following, started streaming on Twitch, started making a highlight channel. That blew up. So now he doesn't make videos on his main channel at all. Uh, and all of his videos are just highlight videos, just edited. He pays two editors to take his VODs and clips and just make videos out of that. And he doesn't have to record and edit and write or anything like that anymore. It's just done yeah. for him. 
No, it's the same idea with like fighting game stuff as well. Like it's just, you know, if you get a following, if you're a pro player, you're gonna have a following. You start streaming on Twitch, you've got views. You get pay an editor to take the vods and make them into content for you, and that's just another revenue that is made for you that you don't really have to work to it just you know it just makes money for you so yeah yeah it's a shame it is a shame though because content as a whole has dropped like quality wise absolutely but, and the biggest but they're making more money this way around so has absolutely been eris's channel because i was a very yeah. big atp fan when he did the ATP podcast this. Yeah. and yeah, I was a huge fan of his channel. And he did actually used to make YouTube videos where he'd go in and actually make a YouTube video. But yeah. once he became a streamer, he doesn't touch his YouTube channel anymore. Now it's nah. purely clips. And, you know, a lot of it isn't finding game stuff. Some of it is. And I don't really yeah. begrudge him that. But I do miss the days where he did a podcast. And yeah. I think that went a long ways towards helping Tekken too. I think the ATP podcast... Yeah was huge for tech i still find videos on his channel or like that get suggested to me like tech and videos of tech i've never even heard of like really oddly specific situations this guy's like a treasure trove of tech and information but it's yeah. all just random yeah and it's like clips way where he's buried just... back in his channel yeah. too yeah <laughs> oh that as well thinking. yeah yeah that is my biggest criticism right now in terms of but you know we should talk a bit about drama because it is fun but in terms oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the overall content, my biggest criticism is that people don't make dedicated videos as much anymore, and they just sort of do these highlight clips. And, yep. you know, every now and then you can get a bit of a gem in one of those, but yeah. overall it's just not quite the same, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's missing. There's missing something missing for it, 100%. And instead it's been replaced with, like, as we say, tech, in, like, sorry, tech clips or, like, yes. just... Or random meme clips um, or your, yeah yeah or, or uh, like unscripted clips and or then drama <laughs> basically or drama which also writes itself <laughs> or you know one that i'm not a fan of that i wish they would stop doing as highlights whoever the editors of these highlight channels are because you can't even blame the the no. uh, people anymore the, the, the person itself now yeah you got to blame the editor now so I don't really like when they do the I'm arguing with my chat highlight clips and those are really common on Eris's channel where they'll yeah, do well, clips yeah, that's, that's and like the bit. clip is him just <laughs> arguing with his chat. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what am I getting out of this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just it's almost like this was a funny clip. Let's put yes, it. Let's, exactly. let's make a whole video over. It's like I don't think it holds up without. You had to be there. Basically, exactly. his entire channel is you exactly. had to be there. You had to be there. <laughs> Eris being mean to his chat is like a. I don't know why. I don't even watch his stream. I just catch those clips sometimes. They just they fucking they do crease me up a little bit. It's just like just needlessly aggressive to somebody who just asked him a question. Oh, I was on the <laughs> I was way back before he was as popular as he is. I was on the receiving end of one of those. Were you? Yes, I <laughs> don't was. Don't ask him anything. Yeah, this, yeah. The <laughs> chat went ham on me, and uh, he he was not pleased. What it was was, and I was being nice. I was like, "What the hell?" What it was is that. Back when he commentated some Evo, and I gotta find the clip, I cannot find it. Maybe it was scrubbed from the internet. Um, oh, yeah. Back when he commentated some Evo, it was JDCR versus Ni. Nee. And okay. this was when they were still really beefing with each other and they're real mad at each other. Just when Tekken 7 came out, so most of the people tuning in were Tekken fans. This was mm. before it quite blew up. It, when I, th I think it might have been still in the arcade gate days of Tekken 7 because there was a, while a few years. Became, yeah. There was a few yeah. years there where it was just arcade only, not console. Yeah, yeah. And so I think it was one of those years. And so the, it was JDCR versus Nee. It was actually a great match, but they were beefing. And Eris kept saying on the commentary, "These guys don't like each other. These guys, there's a grudge. These guys, you know, personal." And he kept saying that sort of <laughs> stuff on the stream, I but he so. <laughs> he never explained why. So then he had his <laughs> he had his personal stream later that night or a few days later, and this is his stream wasn't huge at the this time maybe a few yeah. hundred people. And I stopped by and I donated and I left you know you can leave a little comment in your donation. I said, hey, so I saw the match between JDCR and me, nee, and you mentioned they were, you know, beefing and stuff. Why? And he was not happy. He's like, what do you think this is? Melrose Place? Don't be asking those kinds of questions. And then his chat was yelling at me like, yeah, stop being that's such that's a bitch. <laughs> so that was yeah, not a funny. Did he call experience. you a bitch? Oh, absolutely. Bitch. They were so pissed at that's, me. That's all he does. He's like, yeah, thanks for the money, bitch. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, what yeah, the fuck? But, so that, that did actually make was uh, not a fun experience because it was like, no. 
it's kind of like when you go to meet Bruce Willis and he's an asshole to you. It's like, it's yeah, fun yeah. to watch him do that to other people. But when yeah, you're on the receiving yeah, yeah, end, yeah. it's like, uh, yeah, especially, when I, yeah. especially when I was at, genuinely asking, I thought it was a very yeah. mild mannered question. <laughs> he's probably like so stuck like he's just like stuck in it now he's just he has to treat people like shit or had to treat people like shit or believed that you yeah. already knew and you were just asking to waste time or something no i think <laughs> like, it was i think he was offended because he thought like i was trying you know like i get why he was offended because like i'm trying to i guess get him to discuss the drama and he didn't want to the problem oh, was though is he brought it yeah, okay. up over and over and over <laughs> you can't do it. that yeah, yeah. you can't yeah, bring yeah, yeah. up It'd be imagine if you had like uh, something like with Hungrybox and Mango and Melee and you're like, oh, they don't like each other. They hate each other. They want to kill each other. And you ask why? Shut your you're mouth. Not allowed to talk. Shut you're your not allowed to goddamn talk about mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do, you know, how do you not know we're not meant to talk about it? We're just meant to talk about it as much as possible, yeah. but not talk about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. anyway, that was still, I think, a much funner time than what we have now where we just get these... Uh, stream highlights and stuff. Yeah, it's like I say, it's just really thin content. I don't know, threadbare. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> there are so there are still some uh, YouTubers like like say like I'm trying to join into it, and there's a, a, a few content creators, but it is very much um, how do I put it? It's it's more uh, esoteric information around fighting games. A lot of uh, fart sniffing British people like myself that just want to like talk about concepts right. in fighting games yeah. rather than actual tech so we're not helping anybody get better we just want to gush and <laughs> about also, content <laughs> what happened with core a gaming as far as like it seems like there hasn't been uploads for a while on his yeah, channel maybe it's just me yeah. yeah yeah i thought like, you were to tell me there was some drama he's disappeared uh i think when was the last time they uploaded now it's been a it. while my dude yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. he was one of those channels time. that was really a, a few years ago was really popping off yeah, and yeah. Um, explaining, uh, like explaining all these great concepts and stuff. And I don't know if my subscription box is broken or something, but I haven't seen an upload from him in forever. Uh, it it really slowed down. It was only two months ago, but I, I have I have watched the video as well. It just feels like it's been ages, but it also feels like he was uploading a lot more frequently. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's since like moved again, he's, he's moved to more edited stuff. So talking about the Korean backdash in in depth or different kinds of concepts in fighting games so he's, he's going down the the um essay route like like i'm going down and like these other content yes, creators yeah so it's, it is it is kind of like made this like hard split in the content as we were saying so there's like yes. some small creators like myself that are making well well core game is not small but you know uh, lesser known or you know kind of hidden con hidden gems of right. content creation yes, yeah that make this information like this uh essay like information drama and highlights <laughs> yeah yes, so, yes. there's yeah. odd bits of techno in there uh but yeah it's it's kind of all split up now <laughs> and i just to wanted in, in to comment a bit because being a melee player and following the melee scene it's gotten and like smash in general i don't yeah. play the other smash games at all and i i don't play melee that much lately either and it's gotten the mm. drama levels have gotten absurd on that side of things they've gotten thanks They've yeah, it's like when they're focusing on like top players. Yeah, like to I I don't really know too much about what's going on in the Smash scene, but um, I you know I saw that uh, the video uh, that somebody had made based on Leffen. It was like a what is it? Like yes. a three hour. Yeah. Win well, yeah, actually the picture made... of a Winra logo. Yeah, actually yes, he actually made about three of them, but wow. he kept <laughs> unlisting them, and I watched really? all three. So I watched about nine hours worth of uh, videos about his his issues with Leffen or whatever it was. But my perspective on all that was <laughs> I actually felt a bit of sympathy for him because everything had been leading towards something like that. Like all this, there'd been enough, like the drama had been escalating enough. Mm -hmm. Like Leffen made all these drama videos about HBox, for example, about how HBox right. was a bad person and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, just in general, all these people involved in Smash and Melee and all in Smash 4 and all yeah. that, like the levels of drama have just been escalating and escalating and escalating. There are channels dedicated to like in-depth, almost like 4chan level drama in that scene at this point. Yeah, and then, I, I know what you mean. Uh, this guy was like, oh, okay, you guys making drama videos? I'll make a drama video. I'll make the <laughs> ultimate drama video. And then, and then everyone's like, whoa, dude, what are you doing? 
And then he it's, gets banned. It's going to be somebody that did it. Yeah, <laughs> Somebody exactly. had to do it. It was just, I, he was It was the like, guy. you know, that uh, if you're at a party, like in those, I think there's an episode of How I Met Your Mother that's like this, where they're at this rave or whatever, and everyone's yelling yeah. and screaming. And then I think he says something like, I'm going to piss my pants. And the music stops and everyone looks at him like, what are you <laughs> talking about, dude? I think it's like that. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, it just landed at the wrong it time. Landed, kind of yeah, it landed. Yeah, it like mm. landed at exactly the wrong time, and the dude got ended up getting banned or whatever. Did it seem like relatively reasonable stuff he was saying, or did it all just seem a bit? Because people kept. Well, I, I didn't watch it. I uh, felt but people like people were calling him crazy. If I'm a bit of an armchair psychologist, I felt like what he was saying wasn't necessarily slanderous, but what it was is that he might have had some sort of personal issues maybe right 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 you know ocd or those types of things like you know living in this world and in this context people like that can get pushed into these real bad decisions and then yeah. you get yeah so i i really don't like this sort of escalation that we're seeing with the drama content where it's starting to get real personal and yeah real yeah. sort of slanderous it's, it's strange because like i say it seems more based all around like the personalities uh, right, like yeah. content in general or fighting game stuff in general it may have always been uh, i'm not too certain uh, but i feel like everybody's so tied up in <clears throat> in following personalities more so than like I, I don't know focusing on one game or playing the game like you were saying uh, a while back that uh, people would spend you would go to locals and yes. people would just be talking about the game and mm -hmm. since then it's just talking about the drama instead uh, yes, even that's exactly right in person level you know yeah, um, a few years ago when I was much more active in the tournament scene, like for instance, me and my, I'd say four or five, six, maybe even six years ago, yikes, when, when we'd go to tournaments, so we'd all drive together in a car going to a tournament, in that time, we'd have these three hour conversations, because it's a long car ride, talking about the game, talking about the matchups, talking about the tier list, talking about who, what our strategies were for the tournament, like, oh, I'm going to play this character, counter-picking strategies, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. All that's, that, we'd do that on the way there, we'd do that at the tournament, and then we'd talk about this stuff on the way back. The entire nine-hour trip, or whatever it was, was all talking about the game, tech, strategy, mentality, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Fast forward two or three years ago, I'm at, I'm at the same sort of thing, at a local, at a tournament, new players are coming in. The entire time we're talking about drama, top players, like that sort of stuff. I'm like, what yeah. the hell has it's happened? A... And that no, was in person. That wasn't on a Discord channel. It's like everybody's figured out the game or they don't want to speak about the game anymore and they've yes, just moved they're, on. They're, like, they're emotionally. Moved on. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's, uh, and I suppose, I mean, Let's say I'm making tech videos. There's only so many times I can talk about wave dashing. There's only so many times I can mm. explain the mission and like mix up process. Yes, that's so true. So once that video is made, I've, like either my channel dies as a as like a library of tech for that game, or I've mm. got to keep finding new content to talk about. And one content that's always being made is people arguing with one another over fucking pointless shit. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, for example. I don't know how far behind we are now in the local cycle of news for fighting games, mm. but a, a, a month ago or so, I was listening to a comedy podcast, and they brought up Tekken drama in the comedy podcast. And what was crazy is they didn't know what Tekken was. They had no <laughs> idea what Tekken <laughs> was. They were like, crazy. "Yeah, there's this Japanese Tekken player that you know got in trouble or for saying this stuff." And on this comedy podcast, they're like, okay, what is Tekken? And the guy's like, oh, it's like Street Fighter or something. It's a fighting game. Yeah, like they had no enough. idea what Tekken was. So that's how that's how accelerated drama is getting to where it's like reaching people outside, outside of the of FGC. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did hear about that one. It was the... Um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a name wrong. It might be Tanu Kana. <laughs> I forget. I don't want to call the wrong one out because <laughs> uh, she person. got famous. She was a pro player. That's Japanese, right? Yeah, yeah, Japanese okay. pro player. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the news cycle that went around it and all the drama and 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 people joking about it on Twitter was focusing on like this one quote. Yes. <laughs> uh, everybody's under the impression she got fired for saying men under under five seven don't deserve rights, which uh, right. I, I'm five seven, so I mean, I guess I, I guess I'm allowed to have rights. You by barely, <laughs> yeah, you barely stuck <laughs> yeah. across. I bet I'm barely human. Thanks, cool. <laughs> but um, the uh, 
other things she said was actually she actually said many things not just right, about right, short, right, short yeah. people which actually led to her getting fired but people like to just omit the information <laughs> it, it's a funnier story when you say she got fired for saying men that are short don't deserve rights where right. she was actually said racist thing I, I, I'll not pull the quotes up I don't want to get you demonetized or anything like right, that she yeah. said some pretty pretty racist stuff pretty sexist stuff about women um needlessly mean spirited things <laughs> to, to like to say uh and so her pro her pro team just basically let her go because that's right maybe they don't want that, that associated with them you don't need to talk about this with shmups because no one's sponsored in shmups that's not happening yeah but <laughs> it is an interesting topic in fighting games as far as like sponsorships and stuff like that yeah. because yeah not too long ago tekken players the idea of a sponsor Tekken player was laughable. Yeah. And like the Tekken yeah, Tag 2 days. Who's yeah. sponsoring you in Tekken Tag 2, right? Yeah. But after the popularity of Tekken 7. And what's These, interesting yeah. about all that sort of stuff is when you sign up to get sponsored, I'm assuming like in these contracts, you're you're like a representative of yeah, this I would imagine corporation so. or whatever yeah. it is. I used to be a tour guide for a college and like I yeah. had a I was considered an ambassador of this college. I wasn't yeah. on social media, but I assume if I was going on social media as an ambassador of this college, and I'm talking about, <laughs> you know, yeah. short dudes do not deserve human rights or whatever. Maybe I'm you wouldn't saying. be allowed to be a tour guide much longer. Yeah, yeah it just seems like, right, like buddy. obvious stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, the uh, dangers like, of social media are yeah, ex exactly. liability uh, like, in those situations. It, uh, it was kind of crazy because I saw people like all like just laughing it up and thinking, well, like I said, this story was probably that you saw it on this podcast was like, oh, I can't believe she got fired for this. But yes, yes. In actuality, she didn't just get fired for that. She got fired for a lot of other things. A lot of this drama um, in the FGC is like warranted. Like we've got like the Mr. Wiz thing is probably something worth talking about. Not Absolutely. specifically on this podcast, but I'm glad people actually like, you know, <laughs> like, let's deal with this rather than. But you know what's interesting not... about Mr. Wizard and about mm. all the sexual abuse issues that occurred yeah, yeah, in yeah. the FGC? is that when you live in an environment in a social media environment with all this manufactured drama all this yeah pointless drama which occurs constantly like for example yeah. this was on a discord but this is a good example of this i remember i mentioned on discord during one of the tekken patches or whatever it was i was like that mi the one that mishima's got buffed all the hell and they got like oh, yeah, all these yeah. awesome buffs i was like this is awesome you know i was like celebrating it people are getting <laughs> so mad at me because like oh you, you <laughs> stupid mishima player stupid do you know you know and, you know like people are getting outraged and stuff and yeah, yeah, you got yeah. like people were getting drama that's not drama yeah. that's just no. caught talking about the game but when you live in this environment where people are constantly attacking each mad. other over yeah, yeah. dumb shit then when something yeah. real actually happens like sexual abuse is occurring or yeah. whatever is going on that's like a real issue people are so drained from all the yeah. fake bullshit that they yeah. don't it's like the same thing uh, whatever it does feel like it kind of like disappears quite quickly exactly. I, mean, I mean what was exactly. that Inf um infiltration and he's exactly. a pro street fighter player right what was he like hit beating his wife or something like that and he's right. still in the pro league because people are just like ah fuck it he presses buttons good what <laughs> like yeah it's uh it's it's a little peculiar um like so say some some uh, drama definitely is just like i, I think in these cases yeah but um, it's like the industry around it that i think is a real problem because yeah, yeah like for for example with like the infiltration thing i remember listening to i think it was ultra chan or something where they discussed mm. because ultra chan they they have like an actual stake in deciding who gets banned or whatever it was like the FGC yeah, rules. Basically they talk about the FGC rules and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they actually had ultra David actually had a really great episode of that show where he talked as a lawyer, like what are the implications of this? Why is this case being examined and that case isn't being examined? And there was actually a lot of underlying complications because mm. like are we now doing background checks on players and stuff but it's also yeah. like but it's also like well if it's at your attention you have to do something about it and that was kind of like yeah. the ultimate ruling that i agreed with it's like 
no, we're not going to go snooping through your personal life. We're not going to snoop. We're not going to background check you. But if yeah, it's yeah. like it appears in front of you as, okay, this is an issue. You got to treat, you got to, yeah, gotta yeah, address exactly. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, you know, like, like extrapolate it further. It's like if, if somebody's, a, I don't know, a murderer or something like that, you've still got to like, well, not really our problem. He can just keep representing us. I'm like, what? It doesn't yeah. really work like it that, gets, does it? So. It gets real complicated. <laughs> but my yeah. larger point was that in this sort of environment with social media and there's these all these drama channels, like weirdly inverted, where like bad news becomes good news because it's like, yeah, Mr. Wizard <laughs> is. Yes, exactly. It's like Mr. Wizard is a, you know, has how these sexual abuse problems in the past. Uh, mm. If you're a drama channel, you're like, this is the best day ever. This is yeah, like yeah. gold because That's video I'm for the going next to five make, weeks. Yeah, I'm going to make <laughs> videos on this for weeks and weeks and weeks, right? Yep. I don't know what exactly could be done about it, but I do think it does make the FGC a little bit less fun to be a part of, I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of hard to like, it's a, it's a hard sell to be like, oh yeah, come play fighting games with us. We're a cool community. And then like right. literally every and then video the you see is... Every video is, exactly, that's right. Every video is about how it's full of sexual abuse and stuff. And so, yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it's like exactly. your impression is like, okay, so that's what this is all about. This is like, this is a rampant issue. Yeah. That's just the it, impression it, it, you get. I think it's I think it's good it's called like I say they've got to stress it is good that it gets called out like I, like I don't want to be like yeah let, let's not talk about it it definitely needs to be out there but yeah it does feel like um... but there's like a balance to it there's a certain amount of balance where it goes from being discussed to being exploited there's like a yeah, balance that's... that happens there where yeah. you take a topic of someone being sexually abused and you keep pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and there comes a point where now are you, are you're you sort pushing of it using to... it for your yeah, own gain. Yeah. You're not. Are you pushing it to get rid of it? Are you pushing it to to gain like, yeah. re reputation? So that's why oh, I will if you say, get sponsored I will say... and you start saying wild stuff on Twitter, you're gonna get fired. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they don't want say, to be sucked here. into that industry. <laughs> exactly. I want to put this out here. People under five seven do deserve rights. <laughs> 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 I support my short kings. I will not. I will not have slander. So but that, that's that's the that's the fighting game community uh, <laughs> lambasted. <laughs> yes. Well, I think it's I think it's a bit of a healthy critique because honestly, I'm yeah, getting yeah. sick of it. It's just I would uh, like to see more curated content. I'd like exactly. to see people focus more on uh, on 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 the games and try and keep games alive longer rather than just seeing. I mean, you can't really fault content creators for doing this because again, it's them. But it's it's, it's yeah, it's and, like a nasty cycle. You like a nasty. It's the cycle. way. It's the yeah. way the platform works. Is you need you need views to justify what you're doing. You know, what I mean, you need to put food on the table. Generally oh. speaking, with gaming YouTubing, there's just been a real drop in just uh, content in general. As far as people yeah, just, just streams and stuff. Just the amount of people. It's like a lot of channels just stopped. A lot of channels just quit, and so mm -hmm. that has yeah, a, it, that's been a tough factor as well. Yeah, uh, like I said, I think I've got. I'm a bit obsessed with YouTube. I like I've, I've constantly got over 150 videos in my watch later list. I'm yes, always yeah. like chewing through, and yeah, it's kind of a shame when I go through like my subscriptions and I'm like I haven't seen anything from this channel here. I haven't uploaded in a year or longer. Like it's getting a bit rich for me. I'm two I'm two months out from my last video, <laughs> but right. uh, I'm working on it. Okay, <laughs> if anybody is subscribed who's watching, I'm working on it. Uh, but yeah, like it is a, it is a shame to see. Yeah, so yeah, and it's a shame that, like I say, it, it's starting to move, or it has moved, unplanned, unscripted stream highlights. Uh, yeah, stream highlights. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a, a you know clip there, clip there, and it's I mean, sometimes they can be funny. You know what I mean? It's just, but it is not as good <laughs> as the old content. Well, well like yeah. you can't. This for example, made, but it's avoiding the puddle shippy. podcast. That was yeah, seriously, like five or four or five years ago. Yeah. And I still go back and listen to it because it was just that entertaining and just good. that good. Yeah. 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 Even though they're talking about like games that have long <laughs> since passed relevancy yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's still fun to go back and listen to because it was so yeah. well made and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can I'm still hoping... find this kind of content around, but it's just it does feel like on the decline or like always on live support. Like these channels yes. can only upload once every few months. You know, it's uh, it's just it's a shame. I'm wondering too, getting back to fighting games. We have sort of a new era coming in here where we're going to have Tekken 8, 
Street Fighter 6. Strive's already out, but Strive yeah, yeah. is going to be in yeah. there. Maybe people will actually play the new King of Fighters, or maybe they won't. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that might be a bit of a flash in the pan. I'm not sure. But I wanted to get your thoughts on these upcoming releases. And do you think we're going to see things sort of pick back up and sort of regain maybe the, you know, pre Street Fighter 5 type of, you know, Street like Fighter a golden era? age kind of thing? Golden yeah, era. yeah, like I, I the 09 through 2012 sort of period. Yeah, I, what do you think? I wonder. I, I, I don't know. I, I, like I say, it can go either way. It really can either yeah. drop and just hit like a sack of shit. Nobody's going to play it just dead on, on release. Like everybody's done with Tekken or nobody wants to pay whatever model they decide to go with, whether it's free to play or to, you know what I mean? People, it could, it could hit like Street Fighter V did on release, you know, unfinished, things like that. So it could go that way, or that way and it'll just instantly kill it. It'll not recover. Uh, and we'll go into a fighting game, Dark Age <laughs> or, um, uh, Tekken, Tekken 8 will land and people people are just going to swamp back to it as they have done so we'll end up with like what was that uh, I think what was the absolute peak on uh, Tekken 7 let me just double check I can't remember uh, but it was like 10k maybe that's my guess all, all time peak 18.9 wow uh, nearly, wow, nearly 19k wow. Yeah, uh, all-time peak. Like all those players are going to flood back in. That's going to be the people that play it day one. You know what yeah, I mean? People yeah. that are pros. Everybody that's been buying it over the past few years, all flood to second eight, and it could just completely blow up. Uh, Street Fighter Six. Street Fighter Six. I'm, I'm dubious. <laughs> like I'm not certain how well that's going to come down. If yeah. they've learned their lessons from Street Fighter Five, or, or you know, uh, it, you know, I mean, or if they haven't, that's, they've been really it, struggling. It's kind of hard to tell. They've been really yeah. struggling. They've been pulling it back since they got rid of Ono. The the new dev team have really apparently uh, fixed a lot of the problems. Apparently Ono was the problem with Street Fighter Five. I would say so, I would say Six will will tell that truth because yeah, uh, people I think do tend to sometimes put a bit too much emphasis on the lead guy as like oh he you know yeah. his efforts made this team great or his efforts made them crash and burn and that can happen yeah. i'm not saying it doesn't but i think no. people tend to uh, exaggerate that a little bit from time to time yeah yeah like, like oh no leaves and all of a sudden they're just doing amazing or exactly I think yeah it's example. just based on that one thing it's not yeah. usually one factor in these kind of things yeah exactly I, I will say um very very questionable balancing decisions on newer games since michael murray has kind of taken the reins with tekken I do think he's taken some note. I I, I am hopeful for Tekken 8, uh, despite me shitting on it, <laughs> shitting on Tekken 7 for nearly 40 minutes yes. uh, in that video. A lot of the problems with lack of features is things that, that Michael Murray has managed to put in to Tekken 7. Like, yes. he's managed to get bits in. The thing about... The frame data finally Japanese, made its way in there. You guys are going to know, like, Japanese devs are really, yes. really stubborn, uh, and they won't they like, won't fix anything once it's like you very, know what i mean they, i would can't... say they're very traditional and they're very traditional traditional is another yeah yeah exactly uh but you can't generally tell harada or uh, like these tech devs that there's a problem with balancing they'll they'll just make a change and then literally the entire fan base has to completely kick off before they even consider <laughs> fixing the problem they've just made right uh, tracking hell sweeps being one of them <laughs> like i was a mishima player so like i I don't want that buff. <laughs> like, nobody will rematch me. I don't want that buff. <laughs> well, also, you fight uh, other Mishimas, too. People don't. People forget that. As a Mishima player, yeah. you actually do fight other Mishimas. So yeah, exactly. The, you can't the, 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 sidestep the, as effectively. It's not as fun. <laughs> so Japanese devs can be really difficult to, like, get them to fix their, their game. And it feels like, from what I've read, Michael Murray really, really pushed just to get the frame data added in. There's something Harada never wanted to seem to add in through... Uh, he did an interview with... Avoiding the puddle, uh, Aris and um, or oh, Aris posted the interview on his website. One of the yes. two, uh, and Harada was basically assuming that they never want to give us this information because it's it makes for a better game, apparently, if people don't know how to play. <laughs> and, yeah, he's uh, thinking he's thinking like the arcade days, where yeah yeah like he wants that was to like, a valuable yeah. skill to have in the arcade days. Yeah, you, to, yeah. to sort of pick that stuff up. But in the yeah. internet age, it makes no sense because people. It doesn't make any sense because people up. are already <laughs> and have been doing it for yeah. them. So why why just why make accessing the information hard? Why not just give it to them? Right. Um, 
Uh, and uh, yeah, so he, he fought to get the fight, uh, to get the um, uh, frame data in, but he also added the uh, punishment training, which is a really interesting like feature. It's got problems, but it's like things like this. It's like he's adding these little features in that just, I yeah, feel like I think they're pretty when cool. Tekken 8 comes around. Yeah, he's got, he's, I think that's going to get refined for Tekken 8. I think a lot of the problems with Tekken 7 are fundamental problems with the way the system is. And if they were to try and fix like the movement, You'd have to fix 12 or yes. 1200 yes. other things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm not expecting them to fix Tekken 7, but I think around Tekken 8, maybe they've learned. Maybe well, I'm gonna, like I'm, I'm remaining hopeful. I will yes. be doing a follow-up video when it drops just to like see what's going on. The way I tend to work with games like this, I don't tend to hype myself up. I just pretend Tekken 8 doesn't exist until it releases. I'm, I'm, it's, the concept doesn't exist because otherwise I'll spend all day thinking about it and yes. <laughs> like, it's still yeah. not been released. We talked earlier, we're a bit more pessimistic, which I think is warranted, <laughs> but what would you, what would be your recommendations right now as far as uh, FGC fighting game channels to follow that you think are doing a great job? Oh, I've got a few. Um, my, 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 I'll start with, uh, there's like a couple, uh, Gecko Squirrel and Proxicon. Uh, they write their names out strange, so I'll send a link, and then we, if you yes. want to put that in the description. But yeah. these two are, are two friends, uh, an English guy and an American guy. Both do um, like little short essays, m quite funny, um, like like comedy focused in effect, in effect, but uh, a little informative and interesting talking about certain aspects of uh, of fighting games. Uh, the as I was saying earlier, they they just pump out content like. Like, it's crazy. I don't know how they do it to the speed they do. Gecko Squirrel especially is getting it out, like, a video out a week, every two weeks. And, yeah, they're always funny uh, and always entertaining at the very least. So those are two I'd always suggest. And then there's... Uh, I'll not, I've got a, a huge list, but I'll just give you the, the, the next best three, <clears throat> which is uh, Leon Massey. He's kind of... Oh, I've seen, uh, I've seen that one. Yeah. He's really well known. He's probably the biggest one uh, of these kind of creators. Uh, and he's he's kind of breaking away specifically from fighting games. Uh, he started uh, on uh, Tekken. speaking about... Tekken, uh, right? Yeah, Tekken and Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear is his main. Uh, and he talks about things like jump jump arcs and how that can change yes. um, the, 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 the feel of like how a, fighter, how a character plays in general. Things like that. Kind of um, like really gaming interesting. a bit. Quite, yeah. In fact, very similar to Corey Gaming, uh, but British. <laughs> that's, that's the big difference. Uh, Leon Massey's in. Very, very, very dry humor. Uh, and, and yeah, really, really uh, well edited. Like, he's moved on to balancing in, in Halo was one of his recent games. And, like, how... Um, I forget the name of the technique, but you used to be able to, like, shoot, mel uh, shoot and melee, basically, in, in like, one move oh, in, in wow. Halo 2. Uh, and talks about how that affected balance and you know, why it was removed, changed, just like, yeah, really interesting thought out and really well researched videos with like, strangely good editing. Uh, and as you go on, it will go up in, uh, in terms of quality of editor. Um, Theory Fighter is another guy, he does short like five minute essays on the same aspects, but mainly on uh, poverty games and Kusoge, like uh, uh, Karnov's Revenge and Breakers, mm. is it, uh, Break, I forget the name of it, but he talks about like, lesser played um, games like that and talks about aspects of their balancing and, and um, games that people consider completely broken, but why people still play these broken games because in fact, they're not actually as broken as people make out right, and explains right. that balance. Just interesting, like, I, I'm never going to play these games, but I still find myself like wanting to watch more and more of these videos because just interesting to me. Um, and then the reason his video editing is so good is because his editor also has a channel. Uh, and this channel is called Rubbish, um, uh, Rubbish HQ, I think it is. But I'll, I'll again link in the description. This guy's editing uh, is so good; it's unreal. Like they um, they use Blender and uh, pre and After Effects to just crazy levels wow, for, for wow. like seemingly like they don't need to be this good because the <laughs> writing in these videos is also the the writing carries the videos. You don't need to watch the editing, but. They they just go at such they they just go off so hard with, with the editing that it's like it's hard not to mention each each video is edited like in a different animation style for rubbish uh, so it's like you it's just weird I can't really easily describe their, right. their style yeah, because it it's like difficult. one minute it feels like an Angela Anaconda episode and the oh. next minute it's using like three D animation all over the place it's like it's crazy uh, but the writing is also like 
yeah, it, I, I don't know why this person... But they probably have the least followers of all the people I've mentioned, but by far the quality of their videos is unmatched. Wow. On, in fighting game YouTube, or and maybe out. even in... Even for, like, just non-fighting game YouTube, he, the, their videos are... So, uh, yeah, I'll link them. Uh, there's a few others, that I don't know if you want, if I can... If you want to put the links for those, but I'll not bore sure. people with, like, yeah. putting them down, but they're like... Why I'm an FGC doing virtual fighter videos and um, seldom sad Sam similar videos to the ones uh, mentioned above. Uh, we can link them, but definitely if anybody checks out any of the video, any of the channels I've mentioned, uh, Leon Massey and Rubbish uh, are, are two that I, I definitely recommend. Rubbish is like probably my favorite YouTube channel, but they upload because their work, the quality of their work is so high. They probably only get to upload like once every three months or so. Oh yeah. So you know. Yeah. Yeah, but when they drop, it's like, all right, I've got to, I've got to take time out of my day, put some candles on, <laughs> like, put, get in the bath, bubble bath, and it's going to be a, a rubbish afternoon. <laughs> nice. No, yeah. What, what, what kind of channels do you do? You have any like hidden gems, even shmups as well? Because I've been looking for more shmup content to watch. Sure. Personally. So as far as FGC, one channel that doesn't need recommendation, but I still recommend an aspect of it is. The Avoiding the Puddle channel, uh, the yeah. ATP podcast specifically. So you got to go into the playlist and pull up the ATP podcast. And these are all old episodes, but probably the biggest inspiration for my own podcast was the ATP podcast, even though I'm nothing like Eris style-wise. Just the format and the in-depth of it and yeah, just, uh, just showed me that, oh, like a, a dedicated podcast to something niche, because at the time it was niche, uh, can work. So I'm a, I go through and listen back to those episodes every year, a few years or so. So uh, definitely that. And then another fighting game channel. It's been a hot minute since I've watched a lot of fighting game content. I still do watch the main man's channel, so I probably would put him in there, especially with uh, Tekken 8 coming out. I think it'd be worthwhile. Yeah, he's gonna he's him. gonna make a bit of a return. I yes, reckon. I can I can feel the boiling when Brewing. Tekken 8 comes out. Yeah, so. And then yeah, a the deep name of cut it. from the past that he doesn't, he's not really that active anymore, but he's, his channel's a gold mine for Third Strike, Pikachu Akuma. Some of the funnest Third Strike videos out there because it's him just like perfecting the shit out of people. Yeah, and he plays like the whole, up. he plays like the whole cast too. Of course, <laughs> Akuma's his signature, uh, but mm. he, and Ken, he plays a lot of Akuma and Ken, but he'll play like the whole cast. He'll play like the entire cast. And he's a really good Third Strike player. And, you're not going to find his channel anymore in the algorithm or anything. You got to go hunt it down. Got to search it up. I'll yes, have a look. Uh, Pikachu to learn. <laughs> well, anyway, final thoughts. Thanks so much for coming on the episode. It is a lot of fun. Uh, definitely check out his Tekken video. Check out his channel. Thank uh, you. And hopefully Tekken 8 pulls through. I'm hope. I'm, hope. I'm fingers are crossed for it that they're not <laughs> going to add in something stupid and break the game. <laughs> you can only sidestep twice. You're not allowed to sidestep anymore. Meter like sidestep or something. Meter sidestep, exactly <laughs> that. Yeah, you've got to build up to be able to sidestep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Sick. Or they just right. remove Korean backdash or something. They did that in four. Yeah, yeah I know. Four, you weren't allowed. Yeah, yeah I know. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you here all day. I will rant about Tekken. Man. Okay. I will rant. <laughs> all right. Awesome uh, stuff. Thank you very much. Thanks Adios, for everyone. Me. Take it easy. Bye. So thank you to the $5 patrons, 100, 100, Dingo, Another Joe, Anthony A, Anthony Iodice, Aaron Solis, Bo, Ben, Borgie22, Brian Shiver, Chris Yusufovich, Chronic Burnout 3, Climby Coyote, Cook Some Soup, Corey Mark, Des Audio, Darkwing, Darren Griffin, Delta Tango 6, Disco Stas Leia, DJ420, Praise It, Eric H, FCK, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, Haosu, Kiwi, JLab, JB, RPG, Jim Nockham, John Kelly, Jolt, Game Boy Guru, K, K2, Khalil Reedy, Kikoman589, Larage, Malays, Mark Toms, Matter Oso, Matthew Derrigy, Maz, Megadeth 859, Minong, Mechelin, Michael Stum, Mitch L. Y, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Neon Dagger Games, Oklo Kugels, Rattlecat, Raul, Real Skeen, Riff Mason, Rolf 015, Sarah, Scanline City, Seesaw FW, Seven Overdose, Shmup Junkie, Space Photos, Stadium Arts, Steve Fiction, The Boot Rex, The Real Ikuzo, The Dirty Screech, The N1, The Old Bensta, TRM, Sugumo, Plasmo, Twilight EX, Unico E Roots, Wabby Legs, and Utakaya. Thanks for watching.